What's up, everybody? This is David with Metro Jiu Jitsu. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. Just a few things before we get started. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel. You'll get notified of our latest updates and content. If you have anything that you want to hear on our podcast, go ahead and shoot us an email, metrobjj at gmail.com. All right, guys, we are back live here at Metro Jiu-Jitsu Podcast. I'm Coach David here with Coach Mo Hamid, and Hello. we've still got Zach Vasicek. Hey, it's, man, it's a, it's a blast. We were just uh, in between sets. We were um, just talking shop, and it's, uh, it's – uh, this alone, this camaraderie alone is worth, like, joining Jiu-Jitsu because, like, we're, we're just sitting here like a bunch of old guys. We're not drinking coffee. We're all sipping back on bang. We're going to have uh, probably some type of damage later on, but uh, – <laughs> I it's mean, an energy drink for you listeners. Yeah, it's, it's an energy drink. It's, it's uh, with this what, podcast with brought to you by Bang Energy, the zero <laughs> calorie. That's energy right. Drink. You guys feel free. With yeah, super reach. creatine, ultra coq10, and BCAA. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna ta- I'm gonna tag them. They you can, can pick them up at your local GNC in Southgate, Michigan, at one three seven two five. Your that's right. Or Allen Park. <laughs> Mention <laughs> Metro Jiu Jitsu to get uh, Mo to give you a high five. So, uh, so guys, we're gonna jump right, uh, right into it. I'll, t- I'll do a better job of keeping us on topic. Two simple questions. We're all gonna, we're all gonna answer it. So, okay. uh, I actually want to start with Zach though, uh, with each question. Why do you think the dropout rate of jujitsu is so high? So, before you answer, I just want to add one thing. I, I'm just doing the math, and we have over 30 years of uh, uh, jujitsu experience of. Uh, beginning, middle, and end of people coming and going. So these are. Oh, this is not a guess. There's a lot of. Uh, oh no. Experience no. behind these questions. That's now. I, now I feel less like a spring chicken. So thank you for that. <laughs> oh, I looked up, uh, guys. The following over from our last podcast, a uh, uh, coral belt is your practicing black, black belt, belt for at least thirty years. Wow. It's a seventh degree black belt. So, which none of us are, but I'm just saying, like, so, <clears throat> yeah, they, they are typically 60 or 70 when, when you know, coral belts. So, so, here's the biggest thing that you have to realize is that, um, and I was kind of talking with, I was talking with Dave Mo about this, jiu-jitsu is hard, it is very hard, it's a constant grind, and, you know, the thing is, just like if you start your own business, or just like you take over any endeavor, you are going to be given every single reason to quit and it's funny because that's actually the way part of the way i teach jujitsu is my job is to give you i want i'm going to make your life so miserable you're just going to ask for a way out and i'm going to give it to you and that's that's what jujitsu was really designed to do and you have to really ask yourself you know do i really want to do this because the thing is that you know you start off as a white belt it kind of gets cool get to a blue belt you get your blue belt and all of a sudden like yeah i got my blue belt yeah, you know yeah. we've all seen the videos of like you know the guy gets a blue belt start eat, you know i'm gonna book my trip to, to brazil we need nothing but acai and you know i mean you've you've seen it there's even been stories where guys go they get maybe the pro belt they get the solo tattoo or they get the affiliation tattoo and then they quit yeah. and they're like oh yeah i used to do that and you know the the thing is that when i started there was an uh, out of the core group of us right now only like two out of like that six of us that really started are still teaching and you know it kind of gets to the point where you know you really have to ask yourself is this important in my life because you will you will always focus on what's important no so matter two, what. so two out of so you started with six people and two of you are, are brown belts uh yeah so right now that's that's not normal that's yeah. not who's the, who's the other one uh nate cole he trains at uh i believe he's i believe he's a brown belt he might be a black belt i don't know he trains uh he trains down at badger he, he i tra- fought him you fought him yeah we both uh, <laughs> we both fought. he's freaking he's tough. tough yeah he owns so, a lawn service right yeah you season. started with nate cole yeah. nate, nate. nate i gotta tag you in this I yeah, know. Nate cole, yeah so i started with nate cole and uh, mark poupard that i know they're both still training um for sure i know and uh you know the thing was is that you know you have to you, there's you have to have this mentality of you know no matter what goes on i'm going to persevere through it and i was kind of telling everybody before this where if you've never done jiu-jitsu before in your life and you're you watch something going on and you're trying to explain it to somebody or you just say you know so when you do jiu-jitsu what actually happens and you know you're going to get choked you're going to get your arms hyper your limbs hyper extended you're going to be put in really bad really uncomfortable positions regularly 
And you know, there's two types of people. There's two types of people in the world. The people you know, the follow-up question is it, it is always when I've said that is, and you like that, and you you you, you're, you're, you, you come you, back, yeah. and you like yeah, and, you know, and I you know, I always say like, look, I I willingly let people do it to me, but this is the thing that you start to realize is that you when you go and you have to deal with real life and death situations of you know, man, I have to you know, I'm try, I'm fighting to keep my consciousness. While someone's trying to hyperextend my arm, mm. and I'm, you know, yeah. All of a sudden, though, this person that I work with that's really annoying, they don't become so annoying. All these little things that people like, you look at them, and the people like focus on all these little tiny things, they better less and less. Yeah. Because when you have something bigger than the mundane to really look forward to, and you actually understand what really matters in life. All the little stuff really becomes background noise. And that's the one thing that I say, though, is, you know, everybody I know that does it, they honestly, they really regret they really regret stopping. And, you know, you see people who stop, you know. they uh, and, and they always give that, like, guilty, like, if you run into somebody <coughs> who's not training anymore, who started uh, martial arts or jiu-jitsu, and then they've, they've uh, come back, and you run into them in the street or somewhere, and you ask them, you know, what he's been up to? They look at you like they stole something from you, yeah. or, or like you, you know, like they're they're they did something they're not supposed to do. Yeah, they, they're like the dog that pooped on the carpet. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. oh my god, you know, I, 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 I'm gonna come back, or you know, I I just, I've been busy, or are and, you still doing that? <laughs> yeah, no, and that that's the thing. And that, <laughs> that, that's literally one of the things. Like you, you're still doing that. Like oh yeah, you're you're still doing that jujitsu stuff, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, all the yeah. time, and it's. You know, it, it's one of those things where uh, it was funny because I, on, on my Facebook post, somebody literally said when I they they're like, "Man, you never miss a nogi session. We thought you were like sick or something. You know, we we're kind of worried about you." And you know, the, the thing is that what when you do jujitsu, you join a community, and it's one of those things that really makes or breaks you because it's like you're going through. And wrestling really taught me this, but. You go through the worst possible situations you can be put in. You're, it's really uncomfortable. You're sore the next day or the next week. I've had to come in where I have cuts and bruises all over my hands. Sometimes I've been unfortunate enough to go and get, you know, knee in the head and you have to get stitches. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've had situations where, like, you know, people kind of look at me at work and they're, you know, I work in an office job, so everyone kind of looks at me a little weird, like, you know, what's this guy doing that he's, you know... I'm just pre- picturing... Yeah. For I'm our pre- listeners who don't know this uh, man, if you were to pick him out of the uh, out of a group of people that you probably want to fight, uh, he would probably be the one you pick, because he looks like the safest bet that you would kick his, kick his ass. He uh, <laughs> but he's, he's, he's a so, walking lethal weapon with so, over 10 years uh, of jiu-jitsu training. So with. if Craig Funk ever actually picks up his phone and actually ever <laughs> answers... Craig, this is geared toward you, Mr. Funk. He's always kind of described me as, you know, if you've ever met Craig, Craig literally looks like a walking Neanderthal. You know, he, he owns a cat, he lifts kettlebells, he's always ripped. And he's always told me, like, when I, he's... I heard he, like, instead of taking a suitcase on his, uh, when he travels, he takes a kettlebell. Yes, he, he does. He, he does. does. Yeah. I think, I'm sure he takes a suitcase as well, but no, he can't, like a, no, a, blood, a blood red <laughs> kettlebell. Yeah. So, he, he always, when he ever described me, he's always like, you know, he first started, he was always big, and he... You know, he went against me, and he shoots in, and I guillotine him. He's like, wait a second, this, this guy doesn't look like anything. How did how did he do this? Yeah. And he, he did one with me again, guillotine him again. He's like, and it just blew his mind. Because the thing was, like, I always look, you know, I've always been called, like, the unassuming badass. Because, like, I don't look like, you know, the stereotypical guy. But it's like, I don't care. I, I've, I know what I'm doing. And, yeah. you know, it's like, people always look at it, you know, like. I prefer that. Yeah, you know. I mean, if, if you look like if I if I <laughs> looked like freaking uh, Andre Galvao, I people would want to start something. You know, what I mean, like if I I like looking like unimpressive. I actually had a member Under, come in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, did I tell you yeah. that some people came in and uh, and they're like, we're looking for the instructors. I'm like, I'm one of them. They're like, oh, and they literally looked me up and down. They're like, oh, like to head tilted to the side. I was like, okay, whatever. I I've, I've literally had it where the the thing that's funny is so like. I've always been around 200 pounds, and I'm about five. I'm gonna say five eight. You know, I've you know sometimes more, oftentimes more. But you know, I've whenever I would show technique, they're like, "Well, that only works because you're big." I'm like, "It's not like I know. It's not like I know what I'm doing." But you know, yeah, I'm just let's just go with that. But you know, it's 
it's just this belt I'm wearing means nothing. Let's not go at all. But you know, when when you go and you decide to do jujitsu, you have to make two conscious choices. One, you are going to go through the worst possible situations on a daily basis, and two, you're going to go to some very dark places. You're going to be put in some really Mm. bad situations. You know, like not just physically, because the thing is that. You know, you do anything you go through, you get used to. You get used to being in, you know, positions like you're in a, tr- you know, you're, you're seeing that you're starting to see the shutter bulbs going because you're losing consciousness. Yep. You're, you're, you know, you're feeling your arm hyperextended while you're fighting that out. You're feeling your leg hyperextended. Yep. You know, you're fighting off that. You're starting to feel the pain from Nicholas. Like, you get used to, as weird as it sounds, you get used to that pain. You're like, okay, yeah, this sucks, whatever. But the biggest thing is that this constant metal grind, you know, the grind on it, you know, it's like they are used to, you use the, uh, striking term, you know, boxing, you know, you're getting those body shots. And it's like, yeah. the worst one, though, is like the mental fatigue that sometimes you'll be put through because, you know, you have one or two newborns that are both been crying all night. You know, you got eight to 12 hours worth of, worth of mm. work because, God, you know, if you're lucky enough to legitimately do nothing but jujitsu, God help you because that you are living a blessed life. Yeah. Yeah. That mental fatigue is really, uh, is really what it's about because you know you uh, we all bring luggage with us to the gym when we check into the gym we get our uniform we tie our belt everybody has it and you can even see it on everybody's eyes that we all bring our luggage but when the technique starts when you're learning the moves or when you're actually rolling and you're sparring it's still there inside the body but it's not um but you're learning to focus on something else. You're learning for a little bit that 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 um, the uh, emotional luggage that you carry is not gone. Yeah. But it's still, at least for me anyway, it's not gone. But it's you you get to completely uh, disconnect from it for a little bit. Yeah, and I and I think to um, you you absolutely hit the nail on that. It's not just that it's difficult. I would add to that. It's not just that it's difficult because there's a lot of dis- difficult things. I'm sure it's that. Life doesn't stop as a Ever. result of it. Like you were saying, like like uh, you know, life doesn't stop. Those bills don't stop coming in. You still have to pay and those you bills. Know you still, still have coming. to pay. You know you're, the, you're those kid, that kick that your daughter is absolutely going to cry at three a. And so there's every reason in the book. And you know, we get, uh, you know, I have to be sent. I have to be sensitive and mindful. Like I, I'm not uh, to get not to go too personal. There was a time when like we had a real like financial issue in my household, and jujitsu was never negotiable. Like jujitsu, like li- I literally sold my house before I stopped going to jujitsu. And this is this is the thing is that when you do, when you develop that community, you start to find out you know like you, you start talking to people. And the one of the craziest things was when I first started doing jujitsu. When I first started, I had a cousin of mine tell me he's like. You're never going to be able to network doing jiu-jitsu. You're never going to be able to meet anybody doing jiu-jitsu. You need to pick up tennis. You need to pick up golf. What's funny is when I moved, when I moved down to Atlanta and I knew no one. Like, I literally knew no one in the area. I moved down there and I ended up meeting you know, a whole lot of... Instantly. I, you, you get a, you, I got a whole new group of friends. And, you know, I, it was funny. When I bought a house, my real estate agent... Met him doing jujitsu. Yeah, I got my loan through. Met him doing jujitsu. It's that network we were talking and about. And the yeah. the thing is yeah. too that you you find somebody that you can talk to because you know you see the the biggest thing about it and why I would always recommend that no matter how much it sucks never quit is you have somebody you can talk to. You know, like Dave, you're going through a really tough time. You know, most like man, you know what's going on? Yeah. Are you okay? Do you need help? Like, dude, we're here for you. You know, like, dude, I haven't seen you in a few days. And, and you know what? You could be complaining about, um, like, we could have some issues at work or whatever. And if, you, if you're if you talking about those issues you have with somebody who does not train, it's like, oh, uh, you know, you can't really get a, uh, they can't get a feel of what you're going through. But with somebody who does train uh, and, and on the journey of, of jiu-jitsu like you do, um, you know they're actually more uh, empathetic because they know oh you're you're doing all you got issues at home or at work and i know you got issues here because you're about to get your ass kicked for 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 one or two hours so you know uh bless you for getting in here and you know 
Well, in the the biggest thing though is that jujitsu is that escape. You know, it's like yeah, it's the you know the coin the phrase it's a safe space. Yeah. You know, it which go figure how you know doing jujitsu is ever your safe space. You know, that's that's a whole another conversation, but. You know, you have somebody. You know, your your kids got your. You know, you've been in the hospital with your kid. You you're you know, you're barely keeping afloat financially. Yeah. You have everything going on, and jujitsu is like the one thing that keeps you mellow. Jujitsu is the one thing that keeps you sane, and it's yeah. Yeah. that's the that's the thing about jujitsu is that it gives you every reason to quit, and that's the thing is that when you make that success, it just feels that much more. Yeah, I can I um. Was it three years ago now? I think it was when that was when I started doing early mornings. My uh, for those who may not know, my daughter, uh, she was preemie. She was in the NICU. Like every every day was a question mark whether she was going to live. And and so I, the only time I, I could make jujitsu, I was like, let's do it. Five a.m. It might have been five five thirty, but it was like that escape. That was like all of the other stressors. They definitely keep it going. Um, but let's see. I got the. Uh, so with that and said, so the dropout rate's high. Okay, jujitsu's high. We all still practice. We're all brown belts. Has there ever been a time? Uh, we'll start with Zach. Where you've considered quitting jujitsu? Yeah, there was a there was a couple times. Um, I remember, you know, one time I just I just I didn't really feel that com- I, there was a time where I didn't really feel that community thing, and it was one of those things where like I was. What belt were you? I was. I was a blue belt for a long time. I was a blue belt for probably about four years. Or no, I was, yep. yeah, I was a blue belt for about four yep. years. Same. Um, and, like, I was at the blue belt level because I was more so... For all you listeners, uh, that's an excessive amount of time to be at a blue belt. Yeah. I was, a, I was about a blue <laughs> so, Well, it's a long time. I always say I'm a slow learner, but it's it's a long blue belt. Yeah, yeah I was a long blue belt. And uh, I think I was, I, I, was a blue belt for about, I was a blue belt for about the same time as a purple belt, and it was more so... There was a lot of politi- some political stuff, but that's another story. But I was I was about a blue belt. I was a blue belt, and I was just I felt really stagnant because the thing is that you know when you're in a small group, because generally jujitsu places will break down into one of two things: either it's a pre- either it's a small school or it's a big school. Mm. So you know you, everyone's <clears throat> seen it. You know you, you have you know smaller schools that you know maybe have only a hundred places, hundred students. Then you have other places where like they legitimately have like a hundred kids at hundred people in a class, yeah. you know, and it's just always crazy like that. But, you know, I was in a smaller school and I just, I wasn't really feeling, you know, it's just like, you know, man, why am I driving from Trenton to Monroe? You know, what, you know, you know, you always reach that point of like, you know, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. And I got a, I remember <laughs> I, I got a call from this, uh, his name is Ray and Ray kind of called me up and he's like, Hey man, uh, you know, I haven't seen you at the gym. Are you doing okay? And it's like, it kind of was like, Oh my God, I, you know, somebody actually cares, you know, yeah. I have a reason to go through. And then uh, one of the other things that kind of popped up was, you know, when I, you know, kind of, you know, as I was kind of going through life, I, you know, I had that, had a little r- brief moment, you know, when I was, when I kind of hit 30 and, I, you know, kind of did a life re-evaluation and I was like, okay, you know, what do I want to do with my life, you know, because yeah. it, it was, it was kind of one of those moments where... <laughs> I was like, you know, all through my 20s, because I graduated college when I was about 21, so, you know, maybe 22 is when I started doing jiu-jitsu. And I've had, I've been very blessed. I've done, I've, you know, I've gone, you know, like I said, I've trained, I've gotten a chance to go and train at, you know, with Vinny Margalash. I've gotten to train, you know, I've been able to have some amazing stories, train some amazing people, but I was like, you know, what am I really doing with my life? And then I kind of made the conscious decision of like, you know what, I've put so much into it let's just i'm gonna go all in on this like i'm gonna make sure that unless i can't physically move my arm or i have like uh i know that if i go with somebody i'm gonna get them deathly ill it was that call that did it for you well that was a different time that was but that was the first time the second time was when i hit 30 so the the first call i i let me rephrase that when i was about when i was about maybe five years into my jiu-jitsu career is when i first had this thought and then this was probably about maybe a year and like around 30, between 30, like right when I hit 30 was when I did the life reevaluation. So there were two times for me. And this was the second time where I was like, you know, what have I kind of been doing with my life? Because, you know, at some point in time, every when you do jiu-jitsu long enough, you're going to always have that feeling of, you know, man, what am I doing with my life? Unless you, unless you're somebody who's legitimately been able to open their own gym, make a lot of money and, you know, do that. 
you, you always kind of have this feeling of like, you know, man, I, I never want to say I wasted time because, mm. you know, you, you always have that look of it as if you don't, if you do something and you don't make money for it, but you get something that could, but you, if you do something, you don't get money for it, is that wasted time? Yeah. So like, yeah, maybe if I would have not done jujitsu, I would have gotten a job that would have, that would have paid more, but, you know, had given me less flexibility. I would say that. Uh, you know, everything that you've done or we've done in our jiu-jitsu career to a certain point prepares you for where you make those decisions because a lot of times it's like we, we get called professor as a black belt for a reason and it's not just on the mat. Off the mat, you're actually prepared to, to take control of life and not let it uh, um, uh, kill you, break that, you down. You and know? that's that's the biggest thing is that when you look at the people who built these schools and when you look at what they do and you you see you see people who've gone through you know you look at a lot of a lot of the brazilians you look at the google what a flavela looks like it's less, yeah you no, look at that sure and you you think poverty in the u.s is bad there are people in the, those favelas that they would be they would give their they would give a limb to live in that level of poverty mm-hmm. when you look at what they what they came what some of those people came through and you see you know, it's like it, it kind of it's what really forced me not to quit was like, you know, all the people who've given me all their time, all their effort, I could not look at them and be like, you know what, they really, you know, yeah, granted, you pay money to do this, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they go above and beyond. And, you know, I've had, I've been very blessed to have phenomenal teachers. That yeah. is the one thing I've always been blessed at. And, you know, when somebody really, you know, the joke of, you know, why does the coach yell at you? Because they want you to be better, you know. And for all the teachers that I've had that have really forced me, you know, to really go through that point. Because there was, you know, there was times where it's like, you know, I was driving, you know, I was driving 40 miles each way to work. Yeah. I was, you know, I literally, I was home just about enough time to sleep, do laundry, go back. Yeah. I had every reason to quit, and part of me kind of wanted to, but then I had, you know, opportunities to teach, and then I started to kind of grow, and when I moved down to Georgia, I was like, you know what, I don't have anything else going on, I'm going to go and I'm going to start training, I'm going to devote myself to that, and I love where I'm, I, you know, I'm really happy, you know, it's kind of now where, you know, you, you kind of reevaluate, I was talking with a friend of mine yesterday, um, and he was saying, you know, you, every, you know, every, about every seven years, you kind of go through a life change. And you kind of reevaluate where you're at, you know, like, you know, the the theory that the, um, if a man doesn't change from 20 to 40, he's wasted 20 years of his life. And it's not always that, you know, you're, you know, doing the massive change, but you're going, you, you start to see what really matters, yeah, you know. Sure. And when you, and the thing is that what I, what, for me, what mattered was, I want to make sure I, my life, was, I, there was two things that I have pretty much always kept forward in my head. I want to make I want to make enough money that I never have to worry about money, and I want to be able to train. And so long as I can do those two things, so long as you know the paycheck that I get is enough that I don't I can do whatever I want to do, and I never have to you know say no I don't want to get the guacamole and my burrito at Chipotle. <laughs> you know, I I, I have, I'm blessed about that because you know I go to I the job that I do, you know it's I don't have stress when I go there. And you know that that I'm comfortable. I'm living a comfortable life. I can go train. I can I can train. You know, sometimes you know if I ever want to, I could train two times a week. And I need to kind of work myself up to getting a little. Yeah. You know, I need to start maybe taking a little more seriously. But I don't think that's luck. I think you put yourself in a position to manage stress levels. Every job, every relationship, we all have them. But you know, you learn the tools and the skills in jujitsu to actually help you. Put yourself in a position to deal with those little distractions. For some people, the little distractions actually, uh, they're like, they people break down. They can't handle them and they can't, you know, they can't uh, accomplish their goals. But, you know, jujitsu definitely teaches you how to manage and handle the distractions and uh, and have success stories coming up, uh, come on top of your career. And that, that's that been the biggest, that's the biggest thing is that, you know, every time I, you know, there's a, there was a meme going around where it's like, think about yourself quitting jiu-jitsu, then slack yourself and never think about doing that ever again. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it, it. this is the one thing I'll leave you at. You and every aspect of life 
it's the, you know, it's just life will give you a reason to quit everything you do. No matter what it is, you will always find the most valid reasons to quit. Yeah. You know, you will always find a reason to quit everything you do. And you have to basically focus on is this important? Because no matter, it's as silly as it sounds, <clears throat> breathing is super important. You're going to find a way to breathe no matter what's going on. Yeah. You're going to find a way to eat no matter what's going yeah. on. You're going to find you're going to find a way to do things that really truly matter. And, you know, you and it, if this helps anybody, you know, sit down and ask yourself, what is most important in your life? And not everyone's going to have the same thing as me, you know. I'm I'm in a, I have a girlfriend. I don't have a I'm not married. I don't have a kid. I don't, you know, I don't have a business that I'm running. Mm -hmm. But every you know, everyone has these different things. So, you know, like you know, I have multiple kids. I have a wife. I have a business. But you want to write down, you know, what do I want to do? You know, what do I want to, what's important for me? And then you, then the next step is, you know, like any good plan, what's important for me? How am I, how am I going to achieve that? You know, and you, when you're, you know, for jiu-jitsu, what is important for me? Is it, you know, winning a world championship? Is it being able to know that? Is it, for, you know, is it being a black belt? Is it being able to beat a black belt? Because... Let me tell you, sometimes those are two totally different things. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the thing is that, that without, getting too, uh, without getting too political on this, because we all have stories with that statement, but remember, though, that, that for me, you know, the thing was I never really, you know, I, me being a black belt still, I can't even fathom. But my goal was always if I'm going to go with somebody, you know, who is a lot better than me, I want to make sure that I'm making – it so that they work. I never want to be some. I never want to be that person who goes against somebody, and like they tap them out. Like they just, you know, they tap them out in like ten seconds. Like that really. There's been a couple times where that's happened to me, and that always bothered me. That I never yeah. want to do that. But you know, it makes you reevaluate your life. So, I. That's the one thing though that I that I really did is I found out what do I want to do and how am I going to make that happen. It's awesome that focus and that determination. Um, thank you, Zach, for sharing. Coach, I, I know I, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I know we're running, uh, we're getting down to the wire here, but have, have you ever thought about, um, I've never given serious thought to it, so I have no input. I mean, I, I've, it's, I've given serious, I've never given serious thought to it. Um, but how about you? Yes, I have. I have. And, uh, you know, after listening to you guys talk about the, uh, the, uh, jujitsu, and uh, and quitting and li a little bit close. and getting an explanation of uh, what is jujitsu and why you know why we do it why we want to quit. I kind of look at it as like uh, being a gladiator. And have you guys seen the movie uh, Gladiator? When I, I saw it, Maximus. right right when it came out, uh, right, yeah, Ma what Russell Crowe. Yeah, Ma it was Max. Aurelius. Uh, Aurelius. Uh, well, well, no, know. that was the yeah. So anyway watch it great movie great movie so, so, so the game of a gladiator is is every time that you go out you are about to be killed so the every the more you win the more likely you are to, to lose and um, and the type of uh, determination and drive that Maximus the gladiator had was he wasn't afraid to die and he was willing to die every time that he went out and uh, I think what jiu-jitsu really gives, uh, really puts in, uh, put in my heart and on all three of us I know and everybody who trains is that it gives you, you're not, you're not going to class to really, uh, um, you're not, you're not, uh, I say like this, jiu-jitsu and this journey has, uh, teaches people how to have that commitment to survive. Yeah. And really, and that commitment to survive, like Gladiator inside the movie, it it's it's totally taken off the map because that commitment to survive is five minutes, ten minutes, yeah. you do a couple yeah. rounds, but that commitment and that muscle, that uh, emotional uh, intelligence and emotional mu muscle memory that you build up leaves the mat, and it carries over to everything that you touch and think about outside of the mat, and that really is what. Uh, that really is what kept us here uh, for for uh, thirty years combined of jujitsu, and uh, and that's why um, that's why we have it. I know we don't have time to go into it, but yeah. that's why we have all three of us ultimately have not quit because 
what we learned on the mat has translated mm -hmm. into making you a very successful uh, uh, entrepreneur, father, and community member. And the same with you, and you know, taking your talents uh, and you know, starting your life over in Atlanta and being totally uh, fearless that you're not going to get killed because you know how to survive. You know, and this is the thing when you have when you have a gro properly trained grown ass man. Because you, once you once you get to be our ages, you're gonna deal with some grown ass men, trying that know what they're doing and are trying to do you harm. When you deal with that day in and day out, a lot of the stuff that people are you know griping about. Oh my God, they changed this policy at work. Oh my God, they're making us do that. Are like, and your point I, is, I, I literally what? sometimes feel like Edward Norton in that Fight Club scene where like that that board meeting, he just shuffles it out and he's just like sitting there like like. Uh, Thinking like the, in the board meeting, you know, with a uh, with a mouthful of, um, and that movie yeah. blood, which we yeah. don't do, but yeah, he's like, I don't care, you know, it's it, it, it's not it's not the big deal. You really real the thing is that you know you see and not, not to get too I know we're running out of time, but here's the thing: when people don't have something real, they're empty, and you know people will always try to find something to fill that emptiness, mm -hmm. whether it's being you know. Whether it's being joining some sort of religious affiliation, whether it's you know some people fill it with hate, and you see people who go on to go on social media and post ten paragraph long rants on something that you're like, man, you know it. That's the thing is that people will always try to find something to fill. There's a everyone has a hole. Everyone is trying to fill that hole somewhere. Yeah. You might as well fill it with something productive. You know you want to fill mm -hmm. it with work. You want to fill it with family. I always say, you know, fill with jujitsu. Try it out. It's gonna test you. It's gonna push you. But you look at everybody who's done it. You know, yeah. Granted, they're all successful. That, that that's that's one of my selling points actually as an instructor is that everybody that I know who started uh, until today that stuck with it from when I started um, had has had a lot of success personally and professionally. And I point up to the uh, my uh, my belt system. To get to just purple belt, there's over 200 people that have to sign up, quit, and only one of those will make it to purple yep. belt. So, um, and, and this this is the biggest thing I will tell you this: if you do jujitsu and you stick with it, I guarantee you you're never going to be broke because you're always going to be you're you're never going to you're you might not have a lot of money, but you're never going to be broke because I guarantee you if you stick with jujitsu long enough, yeah, and you actually know jujitsu well enough. You're always going to find somebody who's going to want to learn from you. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing is that yeah. you will is a life skill that keeps on giving. Sure. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Zach. You know, it's good to catch up with you, man. I, uh, um, it's been a long time. We haven't even, we, we did this bot podcast. We need to, we need to get on the mat and train soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, the, sure. yeah, really, really good content. I appreciate you sharing, thank uh, you expertise. Me, thank you as well. Coach Mo. Thanks coach. We'll talk to you guys very soon. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast. As always, if you have any questions or anything you want to hear on our podcast, you can send those to metrobjj at gmail.com. Or perhaps you want to start your jiu-jitsu journey today and come check out our gym. We're located at 13555 Eureka Road, Southgate, Michigan. And we're right next to Planet Fitness. Come on in. Our friendly staff will be happy to answer any of your questions and meet your goals. Talk to you soon.